Salutations, spooks, spirits, and specters, and welcome back to Planetarian, the Reverie of a Little Planet. Uh, Mr. Customer has awoken, and uh, after a bit of a, I guess that was a flashback of a worse time. Anywho, let's move forward since apparently we can't view a projection and uh, go from here. I sat up in my seat and looked around. The figure of the one who had given me the banquet, the robot, was nowhere to be found, uh, to be seen. Had she broken down to the point that she no longer moved, or was she still loitering in the vicinity? While her rambling nonsense was well and good, if she had any intent of harming me, it might have been in my best interest to strike preemptively. <clears throat> Then again, if I were in a sleep, if I were in a sleep so deep that she could put a banquet on me without my noticing, then I would have been unable to resist even if she came on, came to lop off my head. I stood and shouldered my grenade launcher. I made my way through the rows of chairs in order to gaze at the machine. I was completely dumbfounded. There was a massive pile of unidentifiable junk here on the floor. Toolboxes and oil cans left open, a mountain's worth of old rags, an incredible number of parts sealed in plastic bags. <clears throat> Perhaps all of this was for the sake of that machine. It was impossible to tell at this point whether the machine had been in the middle of being disassembled and repaired, or whether all of this stuff had been accumulated here for some other purpose. The chaos from the time of this city's abandonment was thus left preserved right here, even to this day. While the variety of parts was staggering, it did not seem as if there was anything worth taking back with me. On the pedestal where the machine stood, there was an, ins an inscription engraved on an old tarnished metal plate. Planetarium Predecture, manufactured by Carl Zeiss. Jenna. <clears throat> the oldest twin star ball style projector in operation today. Yena-san. It would seem that what the robot was saying was not total nonsense after all. Was this twin star ball style projector some kind of optical observation device? Even if it was so, the dome was airtight and didn't seem to be retractable, and the concentric guest seating made no sense either. <clears throat> but no matter what the original purpose of this facility had been, it was now nothing more than a meaningless historic ruin. It was unnecessary to stay here any longer. I quickly gathered my equipment and put on my half-dried waterproof cloak. And then I could faintly hear a voice coming from beyond the, the open door. プラネタリウムはいかがでしょう。どんな時も決して消えることのない美しい無給の煌めき。満天の星々が皆様をお待ちしています。お客様、ようこそいらっしゃいました。あなたはちょうど。<coughs> I could hardly believe my ears, but I had to confirm it. <clears throat> I walked along the arc-shaped corridor. Sure enough, light and the sound of rain intruded once again on my path. I quieted my footsteps and slowly rounded the corner. <clears throat> this was the reception area of this facility. Although the eaves probably had once stretched all the way to the entranceway, now there was nothing left but the skeletal framework of an arch. Everything from there on out was under the domain, the dominion of the rain. And I really like how you can actually, if you look closely enough, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but look closely enough, you can actually see, like, the rain is actually falling here. In the doorway and even the window here. 
Inside the front counter were two plain chairs, a data terminal connected to an old-style CRT monitor, a clustered stack of papers and books, copying equipment, a megaphone, a flashlight. All of these things, never to be used again, had been soaked in water, rusted, faded away, and had quietly forgotten their original functions. And the rain, feigning ignorance as always, was continuing to fall. There was little here to remind me what a disaster yesterday had been, except for just one thing. That robot was standing like an abandoned watchdog beside the broken glass doors. Totally oblivious to the fact that she was getting drenched in the downpouring rain, she was smiling gently, her hands clasped in front of her. <clears throat> She addressed the deserted rooftop once again. Like a flawless actress, she repeated the exact same words over again. And then she turned toward me. I really liked how that CG like first the eyes go and then her whole body shifted. That's a really nice touch. The robot blinked curiously. Now that I was looking at her under natural light, I could see that her peculiar clothing, which seemed to be made of chemically treated cloth, was filthy in some places and had a ragged texture. I was happy for her concern, but I truly did not believe that any aid would come. <笑>失礼ですが、騒いでいたと申しますと。誰もいないのに喋ってたと。はい、発声練習をしていました。いつお客様がいらっしゃってもいいように。as I spoke this suitable response, I looked around the vicinity for any unnatural signs. And at one side of the counter, I noticed a display case like that found in a jewelry store. I could just barely make out the inscription, Opera glasses, pendants, and handbooks on the case. <laughs> I don't think there's any money to be had. <laughs> Anyways, I will be ending the video here, so thank you all very much for watching, and ciao for now. Ciao for now.